hopefully this is working now. It does not look like it's working. Oh! Oh my gosh. It is working. It is finally working. Why? Why was it such a pain today? Welcome. Welcome to um, the very professional program that is Shop Talk Live. Welcome to the program. I was so prepared, so much prepared that I even had events set up an hour ahead of time. Got my thumbnail ready. Got my topic ready. Shannon's not here. She's laying on the floor. You want to say hi, Shannon? Yeah. Uh, she's not going to be part of it today because she is not feeling well. I'm going to go over to the chat just to make sure that we got some people here. Oh my god. <clears throat> Welcome to the, the church of uh, screen printing, ladies and gentlemen. Because, um, man, that was rough. Dude, for 10 minutes, I'm like going back and forth, and I talked for a good three minutes and tried to find the chat and all that stuff. But, got it going. Got everything going. I'm going to do a quick shout out, and then. I'm going to kind of lay down the rules of the game. Okay, so it's not necessarily a game. An example of how I go about separating, not excuse me, not separating, but choking or spreading, Jason, you with your, your clever jokes, but choking an under base or even spreading an under base or vice versa, choking, spreading a, uh, a color, an overprint, or even just something that could go on a white shirt. So I'm going to do a quick shout out real quick. I think that was a little redundant, but Russell Burns, yes, you are first. Jason Ends, you are second. This is correct, sir. Matthew Greider, strange. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I think so too. Apex Monarch, cool. Thank you. Thanks <laughs> for Russell Burns, I won. <laughs> Prototype 8, howdy. Daniel Foster, I'm confused. Okay. Sorry about the confusion. Uh, I'm just as confused because I set up a, an event towards where things would just transfer over to the, the live that's here. So for those of you that were waiting, um, essentially it, it didn't work as it, it should have and when I started streaming it just wasn't working however no big deal no big deal we got it going now okay so guys go over to shop talk screen printing Q&A and news what I'm going to do if you have some artwork that you want separated or, or to kind of show you how it go about separating some artwork I will do that aside uh, uh, otherwise I'm just going to, to go online and, and find something and then show you guys how it would go about either choking the under base or doing a spread on the, the top colors and in what situations I would do that how I go about kind of figuring out what's what's best for a particular piece of artwork and every single thing's a new challenge, so this will be a good exercise for myself as well. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and, and switch over to the the camera and everything, so that way y'all can see me. And then uh, I'll show you where to go to, to post your, your pictures and all that, that fun jazz. So let's go ahead and get this little intro rolling, and then we'll continue on. Isn't that right, Shannon? <laughs> that was a very weak move. You look like one of the children right now. Thanks for putting up with what seemed like me not being on time. Uh, welcome to the program, Shop Talk, which is the, uh, the screen printing church for all you folks out there that are new. Yeah. Um, However, it's, it's really not a church. It's just a good place to come and learn stuff. So I'm going to... What, what is that, Shannon? It's more a school. Okay, so it's... No. no it's a church. 
It's a church, Shannon. It's not a school. It's a church. How about Sunday school? Welcome to the church of screen printing. Anyhow, so I'm going to bring up um, Shannon spouting stuff out. You, you want to hold a microphone down there? No. All right, then hush. <laughs> So um, basically what I'm doing at this moment is going over to the page, which um, I do tend to neglect a little bit because there, there are some uh, more active pages out there. But, however, this is um, for our, our own, little, own little deal. So I'm going to go ahead and, and switch over to a little bit of a, a desktop view and then... This is where you need to go if you have a piece of artwork. I'll give you guys a, a few minutes. Otherwise, I will just... And, and I'll add you. I'll just make sure... Um, we've got 118 people here. If, if you're not already signed up and you want to submit something and I want to get to it, then, you know, <laughs> what can I say? So, there you go. Shop Talk, Screen Printing Q&A, and News. And then, um, if somebody posts something, cool. If not, then I'm just going to define something on the web real quick to just kind of uh, do it both in Illustrator and Photoshop. So I'll, I'll definitely take some suggestions over in the chat. Uh, perhaps something I can find a, a, a vector image of that I can just convert to open up in Photoshop, make it pixel based, and then kind of show how it go about separating that. So yeah, y'all, y'all let me know. Hey, there, there goes the back end of OBS. Isn't it the, the most fun site you've ever seen in your life? But let me know over in the chat. I'm going to swing on over to the chat real quick and in which I need to relink this thing because, um, which by the way, I, I did the 24 hour, stream and it seemed like a cool concept and then i would come back and check and there's like two people watching three people watching and then you know after about a good 24 hours or i was the only person on there occasionally someone would drop in and, and drop a comment so i don't think i'm going to keep that going anymore because i don't know maybe that might be something f uh better for um someone that has a little more kind of conversation constantly going at certain places uh, like the print life because um, Facebook's got it going on Facebook page although I know it's probably a really big headache Jason I'm sure you can attest to that what was I doing again <laughs> oh yeah the chat I needed to copy the the link okay just give me just give me one second i'll, I'll let you guys kind of join in on the the back end as i um kind of plug this stuff in and figure out what the heck is going on with this man i, I swear it is doing these um it's, it's not easy i'll tell you it is not as easy as it looks and generally i would have shannon um, chatting it up while I did the stuff on the back end, but there we go. All right. So there's the chat. I'm going to go over to the chat and see what we got going on here. Uh, let's see. I don't know where I play. Okay. We're still talking about who's first. Daniel does have a question. Daniel, uh, Daniel did email, right? Yeah. Daniel Foster. I, I to, like, Sorry. We're, last week. Yeah. We, we've been catching up with, with emails and all that stuff. Um, but ask away, Daniel, uh, I'm sure I'll get around to it. Brian thought I needed another crown and Coke on the other gym. <laughs> no, nah, just a little bit of a mix up. Russell Burns, the church of ink. I like that. That's pretty awesome. How did it, or does it feel going from manual printing to an automatic, having the machine to do what surely you normally do? If you know what I mean. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. I, I would say that with the the automatic press, because it required a lot of work, to me it was kind of like you finding a, a car that 
it's kind of semi running and then you completely tear it apart and you cross your fingers and like, is this thing going to work? And then when it works, you're used to riding a bicycle and then you got to teach yourself how to, to drive a car kind of scenario. So I, it, I mean, it's not going to be wrong. Um, manual. I really enjoyed manual printing. Been doing quite a bit of it lately on the, the small press and um there's definitely going to be a transition between the the new press and the current press we have in the shop and all it, i'm more than happy to do it on the manual press uh but you're less fatigued on an automatic obviously you can still get exhausted on it depending on the size of your orders but um you can do larger orders for a little less because you're just cranking stuff out Let's see what else we got going on here. Lil Lindy, what is going on? Hi, how you doing? Jason, what would I attempt? Eh, that, I forgot what I even said. I recall saying that, but um, I don't even know what I was saying at the point. Uh, Scooby-Doo, what's going on? Scooby-Doo says, hello, Shannon. And she also says, Brian, that sucks. Okay, well... Um, Daniel says, I'm so sorry, Shan, didn't mean to take a, so long replying. I am very grateful. Thank you. I would like to chat some more if that's all right with you. If if you can forgive me. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's, that's what he says. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're always open to, to help out. So, okay. Um, I'm going to go over to the f Facebook page, <laughs> the group, the massive group that is the, uh, yeah, we've been taking some time off and whatnot. So, um, okay, it doesn't look like there's anything there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go on the uh, the good old interwebs and find something that that I can just kind of give a, a good example to, or, or just kind of show how I would uh, separate it, and. Uh, I'm thinking maybe um, brands of the world. Is that what it's called? Yeah, brands of the world. Okay, so they have brands of the world essentially is a, if there's some sort of huge company or even a well-known company that you need a, a vector piece of art from this is a little bit of a bonus you can go there and i mean if, if i were to type in mcdonald's their their logo would oh, okay maybe, maybe it's copyright <laughs> or maybe i didn't spell it right <laughs> for the most part let, okay let's say the the houston texans okay unless they've changed some things there we go that here's some vectorize art i'm not going to use this um yeah i'm gonna find something a little a little less uh we'll, we'll do the sunoco here racing fuels i'm just gonna download this i agree this is only for educational purposes so i'm just going to, to download this real quick and there it is it downloaded it's an eps it is definitely a, a vector file. I know normally when I get stuff from the site, it's, it's always uh, vector stuff. So let me go ahead and I'm just going to, to go to my downloads. There it is. I'm going to open this up in Adobe Illustrator. And we're going to open it up in Photoshop. And then we can all decide together what color shirt this is going going to go on because um let's say it's, it's something that's a little kind of in the middle maybe like a sports gray or something like that towards where we might need an under base however you could print it on a white shirt whatever the case may be all right so i dragged this over the, the photoshop uh looks like the art is six inches wide let's just say that we want 10 inches let's say nine inches Nine inches wide for a front chest print, 300 DPI, 
RGB color. I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. And so I'm just kind of pulling my artwork up. So there it is. Sunoco Racing Fuels. You are welcome because I am about to do a tutorial with your uh, very clever logo here, which I'm very familiar with the uh, Sunoco. Now I'm going to go over to the chat real quick and then see what um, if anybody has a preference for the color of shirt that you would like to see this separated on. Uh, let me pull up my chat so I can see what's going on. Let's see. JR got true. Got true. I'm probably butchering that. So, uh, good. Good. True. Mm. Sounds Cajun. Got you. Go. <laughs> Guru. Maybe. I don't know. Um, let's see. What does he say? Hi there. I'm in Houston and will it love to check out your shop sometime? Do you mind visitors? No, we do not. We do not mind visitors. However, um, if you're coming from the YouTube channel and you want to come and visit, we can take a moment to chat it up. But if we're busy in the middle of something, I'm going to put you to work. So <laughs> feel free to stop by. Just uh, keep that in mind. Daniel Foster. Yeah, I read that one already. Um, Daniel, I'm telling t-shirt chick sports gray says Brian, uh, Royal blue says Matthew. What, what kind of cost is involved in the software side of things to get up and running? Um, you need for myself personally, illustrator, Photoshop, uh, that's a monthly subscription of about 50 bucks. And then you'll probably need a, a, a rip software like, um, AccuRip which you can get for about 300 bucks. So initial startup, about $350, I would say. Let's see. I've been in the screen business since 2005. I own screen, Houston screen print, JR. Okay. I, I've definitely heard of your, um, your company. Let me type that in real quick and we'll pull that up and then we're going to get to business. So I'll probably have to put some timestamps down for people that are tuning in later because we do kind of like the, the chat it up a little bit and um, what probably wasn't get, getting as much feedback as I had uh, anticipated about suggestions. So let me, let's see, Houston Screen Print. It's probably HoustonScreenPrint.com, isn't it? Houston Screen Print. Yep, HoustonScreenPrint.com. So there we go, HoustonScreenPrint.com. I've seen this website plenty of times because I'm um, doing search engine optimization for ourselves. Uh, you're, you're definitely up there, so that's awesome. Congratulations. I, I would love to, to meet you and check out your shop. And If you're up for it, we can do a little bit of a live deal, kind of showing off somebody else's shop because I'm sure people have seen ours a million times and, uh, you know, have seen every little corner of the place. All right, so carrying on, let's go ahead and do some separations here. Um, yeah, we still need on the desktop <laughs> view. So let's start out with Photoshop. I feel like most people probably have um, Photoshop. I think Photoshop is a pretty good one to start out with. I personally feel like you, you need both but Photoshop's a good one to start out with. All right, so I did see Sports Gray and, and Royal Blue. I think that, let's go with Sports Gray because it's kind of in between. Uh, Royal Blue is getting a little bit um, towards the, the darker side. I, I guess it's not really too dark, but I mean, um, if you know a little bit of your color theory, if you were to turn that the the black and white, the the scale of from one to hundred percent, I'd say it's closer to seventy percent. So I think sports gray is kind of a a nice medium for this piece of artwork. And what I'll do is I'll just so I'm gonna hit Command Shift N and then make a new layer. Well, I probably should have titled it as I was doing that, but We'll just call this T-shirt. 
and I'm just going to kind of make it a little bit of a medium gray to just kind of replicate the shirt color. I'm going to show you a couple ways that you can go about separating this. However, uh, let me go ahead and pull this, this gray up first. So now that's on my, my foreground color. I'm going to hit Option Delete. I'm on a Macintosh. So there we are. There's our shirt color. There's, uh, I'm going to show you two different ways that I would go about separating this. The probably the easiest, less confusing way or least confusing way would just be to take your, your magic wand and then your tolerance. Let's maybe turn that up to about 30 and then we'll click, let me go back to my Sunoco layer. Let me go ahead and layer, uh, name that layer and then make sure that's selected and I'll just click on it click on the yellow here it selected most of it aside from what's inside these O's so I'm going to just click inside those while holding shift blah, 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 I, man just completely had a brain fart there while holding shift so there we go we have our yellow if we completely zoomed in I mean, I, I think we're pretty good. We're grabbing just enough of that kind of navy blue, but there's still just a little bit of some of those pixels that are like the transition pixels. So we should be fine there. And then what I can do is just go down here to the bottom, make a new layer. And then on the keyboard, I'm gonna hit D. So I bring up uh, D. So that way I bring up the default swatches here which are black and white black being your foreground and now that i got a new color here or, or layer in which i'm going to put my color on i'm just going to call this let's just call it yellow it looks yellow it might be a little golden yellow but um, i'm going to hit option delete and that will fill that with black and then command delete and now our we have our our yellow selection there so that would be absolutely fine for our yellow now with our red let's go ahead and do our, our red next um you know come to think of it i'm probably just going to go ahead and, and do this um this navy color here so i'm just going to hold command down over the, th the thumbnail on sunoco select the whole thing and i'm going to take my keep it on my magic wand hold option on the keyboard and then select the yellow and any of the red parts. Let me hit undo for some reason. I might need to turn my tolerance down a little bit. Let's try 10. I'm gonna hit option. And so th this is one of those situations where, okay, I see what's going on. I'm, I'm on the, the wrong layer. Let's try that again. All right, so I held command down, clicked on the thumbnail and again, you know, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I have a little brain farts and, but I quickly pick up on what the issue is. So that's pretty important. I think you know, as you go along, you'll realize what's, you know, where you're goofing up at. All right. So let's hold option down. We got the magic wand selected and I'm going to just minus out the yellow, do the same thing on inside of the O's. We're going to minus the red here. And then for this part here, I'm just going to take my square marquee tool, hold option down to get this negative sign here. That means it's going to, to remove it. I'm holding the space bar down. I'm just moving this down, dragged over it, let it go. And so now we have our Navy. So I'm going to hit command shift in. If guys, by the way, if you're on a PC, when I say command, just use uh, control. And if I say option, just use uh, alt. Same difference, really. Okay, so let's just call this navy. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit option delete. And that's going to make the navy, you know. So it's essentially going to be our uh, navy separation there. Going back to the yellow. I think I would want my navy up top. So th this is where we would come into a situation where we might need to do a little bit of a spread so that way we can trap 
the the red and the yellow with our navy okay so i'm going to turn the navy off i'm going to turn my yellow on again i'm going to hold command down over the little thumbnail here and click on it that will bring up my selection if you're on a pc hit hit control and i'm going to go over to select and then modify and expand and i'm going to expand this by one so now what that did is basically gave us a little bit of spread and you can do a, a couple pixels worth and it'll be just fine um let me back up for one second i'm going to hit uh command undo or i'm just going to deselect this altogether because I, I just realized that i completely forgot to check my image size um before i was going i know that it pulled it up two sides no no actually yeah we covered that okay so <laughs> uh yeah this this is some of the things i, I go through as a uh designer and separating stuff i just want to double check make sure everything's cool so i, I pretty much undid um what already took care of but let's go ahead and, and we'll repeat that one more time so we have our navy uh, navy excuse me and let's go ahead and pull up our yellow i'm going to hold command over the thumbnail here click on that select uh, for the hell of it this time let's go ahead and expand it by let's expand it by two that gives us a little bit more wiggle room. As you can see here, um, we're kind of bleeding that or, or spreading that yellow into the navy a little bit here. Now it'll give you some more wiggle room if your press isn't new and it's it's a little tired. That will help so that way. Or if you just have a hard time registering things up. I mean, you can boost it up as much as you want to. Uh, just keep in mind that, uh, you know, if you did five pixels or so, then when you go to do that navy overprint on it it's going to show because you're going to have a little bit of a overprint that's going on there all right so we expanded our yellow a little bit so let's go back to our yellow layer i'm going to hit option delete so that way we can fill that area that we selected and there goes our spread we we did a, a two pixel spread i'm going to hit command d on the keyboard i'm going to go back over to sunoco and this is the, probably the simplest method. Uh, we're going to take our, our magic wand, select inside the red, hold shift, select again, and then go over to race fuels and just select every character here. So we're looking pretty good. Got most of it. So let's do that two pixel spread again. Select up at the top modify expand and so i'm going to expand it by two just like the the other and there we go that will help create a, a little bit of a trap now i need to make a layer for the red i'm going to hit command shift in we'll just call this red and we will fill that with black which is our foreground color option delete and then i'm going to hit command d to deselect that so we got our red uh we got our navy we have everything all set up for us so the last thing we need is our white base so in this case with if i was doing a sports gray shirt i wouldn't put a white under base underneath the navy and by the way i'll, I'll come back to the chat here once i, I get through this little portion I'll come over to the chat and, and see what uh, what is going on. But for our white underbase, I wouldn't put a white underbase under the navy. I might spread it out a little bit um, to just kind of overlap the, the navy just a touch. For racing fuels, we'll definitely need to choke racing fuels a, a little bit. Or, or we might not have to choke it because we already did a little bit of a spread. Um, in this case here in particular, because down where there's some of these sharper edges, I'd rather do a spread than a choke because if you choke it, generally speaking, your white is going to show up with that overprint the most. And 
if you were to choke the white base, you would kind of lose some of these fine details. If it if it didn't have this here, then chances are I might choke the base a little bit. Or you can even mix things up. You can choke the base maybe one pixel and then do a one pixel spread on uh, your overprinting colors. So that that's kind of how I go about looking at it. And it'll take some time to, to kind of really figure it out. But then again, I mean, every project's kind of a, every print's a, a new project. Unless it's just something one color, then you, you know how it goes. You can just bang that up. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our white base. I'm going to make a, a new layer. We'll call it white base. I'm going to drag that all the way down to the bottom right above our t-shirt layer and I want to back up the the yellow and the red with this white base. So I'm going to go to my Sunoco logo here. I'm just going to drag that to the top so I'm not getting confused. Take my magic wand, select the yellow, and then I'm going to select the uh the red here. And all these little characters and race fuels. And I, I do believe we did a little bit of a spread on it. And I think we'll be fine if this is but registered. Uh, just keep in mind that, um, let's see, I, I might try it a couple of ways. Let's just get rid of this selection here. So I'm going to go to my marquee tool, hold option down, get rid of that. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a spread on the, the yellow and the red here for this particular piece of artwork. So I can show a couple different ways of doing it. So let's go over to the white base, layer, select, modify, expand. And let's let's just expand it by, um, let's just expand it by two. There we go, we expanded it by two so that way we get a little bit of a trap with the navy. And then I'm just gonna hit option delete and now we, we have our, our black here for what is the red and, and the yellow. Okay, and so that this is like a pretty simple way. This is, this is one of the ways I used to, to do it for the longest, and it doesn't take a whole lot longer than doing it another way that I'm about to show you. All right, so we have our white base for that. We're going to pull up Sunoco again, and then we're going to grab our uh, race fuels copy here for a sec and because we already put a a spread on the red here if I turn the red on let me um, just come in here and we'll, we'll turn our red on you can see that the red goes past it so that way there's no white edges or anything like that you don't have any white edges peeking out. Your registration has a little bit of wiggle room depending on the age of your machine. This will get you covered. So let me go ahead and turn the, the red back off and go over to my white base. And I'm gonna hit option delete, so that way I can fill it with black. There we go. So we, we got our white base kicking. And let's see what else we got going on here. What else do we need? A red, I feel like. Okay, yeah, so we got the red. Let me pull this red up top here. Make sure I'm not missing anything. We zoom in here and we'll probably see the, um, yes. Okay, so we're, we're all set. Um, if you were printing this on a, a light color shirt, white or natural color or ash or something like that um your you got your three colors ready to go you got your red your navy your yellow <clears throat> and then with the uh you know going on a, a color shirt we got our white base so there we are we got all that covered now this is how i would go about actually saving this out for or you could just print it as it is here. You could just go over to Command P, print those out. You might want to toss a, a layer on with 
um, some registration marks or something like that. So you could do a layer that I just made a new layer by clicking the the little new icon down here. Let's call this registration marks. And then we can just take our and you could you could even just do something simple, really. I mean, I've seen people do a T for the uh the top layer or, or top of the uh the registration marks. You can do a T and then we'll copy this off. I just held command option and shift to keep things in line and B. There we go. And then you can just go through each color. We can do our red. Of course, you're going to want to make sure that um, you probably would have to make the, the canvas a little bit bigger. Hit C on the keyboard. We can just make this thing just a little bit bigger so that way we get our registration marks out of the way. So let me grab the B right here. We'll drag that down. Uh, we'll turn the logo on. We can move this T up a little bit. And so there we go. I mean, you could print your red, turn that off, do your navy, print that, do your yellow and your white base, register things up. Um, I didn't want to take a, spend a whole lot of time doing registration marks for this, um, but this is a, a pretty basic, simple way to do it in Photoshop. So let me get rid of this text. Let me get rid of all the separations we did. And we are, we have our Sunoco here. It looks like I did kind of fudge things up a little bit. Uh, it looks like I, I probably put my black on top of my Sunoco layer rather than my white base. So just keep an eye out for that stuff. Um, that's what command Z is for to undo things and kind of walk back just in case you do happen to, you know, just mess up. All right. So here we are with our Sunoco logo. Here is the, the way that I do prefer doing it, which I'm sure you guys have seen before. But if you're new to the channel, be sure to check this out because this will, will be a good way to do it. Uh, just kind of like we did a moment ago. I'm going to take, um, let's just, we're going to do it a little more advanced. Let's go to select color range, sampled colors. We'll select here inside of uh, the end of Sunoco. We'll change this to uh, black matte. Or we can try grayscale. We'll see what the difference is. I'm going to bump this up. Let's say to about 100. Looks like I could have bumped it up a little more, but um, that's fine. Actually, let me deselect that. I'm going to bump it up just a little more. Color range, uh, sampled colors. I'm going to just bump this up to. Eh, let's try. Let's try that. It's a little better. All right, so we got our navy going. I'm going to uh, essentially, I, I don't want to spread this one out. I'm going to use it as a way to actually trap things, the, the yellow, the red, the, uh, the white base, and all that fun stuff. All right, so I'm going to go over here to this little mask icon, click on that, click on my channel, I'm going to hit Command-D to deselect, and then Command-I to inverse that. So now this is our film positive for our navy. I'm going to go back up to RGB, select, color range, and we're going to do the red this time. And we are going to hit OK. We're going to go down, down to our little mask button here, click on that, hit Command D, and we're going to hit Command I to inverse that. So now we got our red. Let's go ahead and start labeling these things. We got our red. We got our navy, which is the... <clears throat> One right above that. Now let's go ahead and do our yellow. Select color range. We'll select inside this yellow here. We'll hit OK. The the new mask alpha channel button here. Um, so now we got our yellow. I'm going to hit Command D. Click on that. Command I to inverse that. We'll call this yellow. And then last but not least, let's go ahead and do our white base. So I'm going to take my, my red, 
and my yellow and I'm going to make my white base off of those because I didn't do any spread just yet. So I'm going to hold command down over red, click. We got a little bit of a selection here. And then I'm going to hold command shift and we'll get this little plus icon and then that will add the yellow. Actually, that did not end up working. Let's try that again. <laughs> So let me let me inverse both of these real quick and then let me try getting the red command shift and the yellow. There we go. So now let's let's make a uh, new layer, this icon down here and hit command D to deselect that. Come down here. So here's our white base. Let's call this white base. And we're going to bring the white base up to the top above navy. I'm going to hit command I to inverse that. Go back to my red, command I, my yellow, command I. And so now we have our, our positives for the most part. Um, this would be in a, a, you know, a perfect world if there wasn't any wiggle room with registration. You can print it like it is. But we're going to put a little bit of a spread on the red <laughs> and the yellow as well. So I'm going to hold command down, click on the red, um, something we do have to, to pay attention to, which is because I did open this image up. Um, let's say for instance, in, in this one here for, uh, this part here, uh, racing fuels, let's, um, we're just going to choke it back for the sake of demonstration. I know I said a little earlier that um, ideally I might want to spread this, but um, I still want to do the Illustrator tutorial without taking too long. <clears throat> and if I spread this because my canvas isn't large enough, it's going to actually, it's not going to work. This part down here is going to show a little bit of white. So let's, for this example, let's just go ahead and choke it. Uh, just just for the heck of it but I'm only gonna choke the the copy here race fuels so I'm gonna click on the red so we got race fuels pulled up I'm gonna hit command shift I so that way it's just getting the black portion and then I'm going to take my rectangular marquee tool hold option to get a negative selection and it will get rid of those arrows so now I can go up to select modify and contract i'm gonna just gonna i'm gonna contract this one by one um just as a little bit of a, a different example so let's go to our, our white base i'm gonna hit uh d on the keyboard and then i'm gonna hit option or excuse me x so that way i can pull it to the front hit option delete for the white base and hit command d to deselect that so now we got uh, we got that taken care of. Let's see what do we, what do we got going on here? I feel like I might have um, fudged something up a little bit. All right, we got our red. Okay, that's looking mighty fine. Actually, I'm back up for a second because I, I feel like uh, with my white base here, I didn't quite do something. Correct. Let me um, let me do that over. Let me just get rid of the the white base and all right. Let me try that again. White base. Let's turn the red on. See what we get. Yeah, I, I goofed up somewhere. So let me let me try this again. I'm gonna hit Command Delete. Get that that white back. I'm gonna bring the uh, the red up. I, I know what it was. Okay, so let me do the, the yellow first, command shift uh, I, and then on our white base, we are just going to leave it as is. We'll do a little bit of a spread on the yellow, so I'll hit option delete there. We got our yellow portion of the, the white base, and then we'll go over to the red, uh, hold command down, bring up our selection, command shift I get rid of my my arrows here deselect those and i'm going to go to select modify contract and we'll do it by one 
Now we'll go over to the white base and hit option delete. There we go. Now it's choked. So I must have goofed up somewhere uh, in this tutorial, but uh, normally when I do things at pace, it, it goes smoother, but when I have to sit here and think about it and explain it, <clears throat> it can be a little trickier. Okay, so the, the other thing we need to bring up is um, we need to back these arrows up. So I'm going to hold command down. It brings up my selection, command shift I gives me the selection of the, the black parts here. I'm going to um, just deselect the race fuel parts and then I'm going to go over to my white base layer here, turn off red, hit option delete. There we go. So now we got our, our white base all settled. But with the, the red here, um, I want to, to spread out the because we already choked the red on racing fuels, I'm going to expand the these arrows here. So I'm going to hold Command down, click over red, hit Command Shift I if you're on a PC. Don't forget Control Option or um, Alt I. All right, so I'm going to get rid of the the racing fuels portion here, and we're going to let that navy trap this a little bit. So I'm going. I'm going to go to <laughs> select, um, expand, and we'll do it by one this time, just so we can see how this comes out. And then I'm going to go over to. Um, no, I'm going to stay on my red. We're we're ex we're spreading the red, so to speak. All right, option delete. So that way it filled that in. I'm going to hit undo just so y'all can see that. Okay. So we got a little bit of the uh, spread on the, the red here. Let's go over to yellow. I'm going to hold command down over it, command shift I. And then I'm going to go to select, modify, expand. And we're going to expand that by one. It expanded a little bit. You can see a little bit of white here. I'm going to hit option delete. And now we got our spread for that. All right. So we're almost there aside from the fact that we need to assign some colors so for the the white base I'm going to select spot color and we're just going to to make this white actually let's add a little bit of cyan in there just so we can see once I, I bring it in to uh, you know once we have all the colors assigned you can you can see where the white base is at and we're gonna make that we're gonna make all these 100% because it's just a solid spot color deal. Navy, same thing. Uh, let's just find a color that's uh, kind of navy. It doesn't have to be exact. Your ink in the screen is going to make it the color it needs to be. So that looks good to me. Let's make that 100%. And then with the red here, spot color. We already got a red pulled up for it. That is just fine. And then the yellow, let's go over here, spot color. Let's choose, uh, let's say maybe 10% magenta, 100% yellow. I'm gonna hit okay. It's probably a little bit more on the golden side than uh, the other is. But let's go ahead and turn these on and see what we got. There we are, there is our logo separated, trapped, we, we did a choke on the white base we did <clears throat> a spread on some of the colors kind of gave my reasoning behind each of it um trapping we got some trapping going on let's go ahead and put our t-shirt color in there um let's just call this t-shirt color and bring this up to um above the white base so from top to bottom that's going to be your print order I would print the, the navy more than likely last. So I, I would probably do the smallest first and then the, the largest. In this case, there's not a whole lot of difference. So you might want to do lightest to to darkest. So in this case, I, I would say white, yellow, red. You might want to flash it there and then do your navy. So there we go. Let's go ahead and make this... Um, t-shirt color here let's do a spot color and we'll just kind of show you what it would look like on top of a sports gray shirt 
and we'll hit OK and we'll turn everything else on. And there we go. And we're we're pretty much all set to um do some separations with this method. I would say you need to integrate it with Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to um I'll just leave these channels here for now. I'm gonna do hit command shift and S and we'll just I'll save this to the, the desktop as test Sunoco Sunoco and we'll save it to the desktop real quick and let's see our spot colors are included layers we don't necessarily need that um, let's see let's do DCS2 in this case you could you could just save it as a PSD EPS uh, which DCS2 will just bring in the spot colors um, I guess more people would be more familiar with Photoshop so let's just save it as a Photoshop file and we'll just save that and then we're gonna bring this over to Adobe Illustrator and I'm gonna open up my t-shirt registration template which by the way is a link is down in the description if if you're enjoying this tutorial you don't have Photoshop or Illustrator yet we do have a, a link down in the description towards where you can grab the monthly subscription of Photoshop or Illustrator and it will uh, essentially swing a, a sales commission our way and that that would be greatly appreciated so let me move forward now that uh, our sponsorship infomercial whatever you want to call it is over with I'm gonna go over to my templates and I'm gonna bring up our uh, registration template I'm gonna hit command shift P and go to the desktop find my PSD and it's gonna give me a little bit of an error there's probably something that I missed let me get rid of this t-shirt color here let's delete that um, let's see we did okay I see what went wrong here let's see uh, desktop Snoko, yes, that is what we want. Layers. Um, let's see, let's try it without the layers. We'll replace that. We'll hit OK. See if that doesn't give us a headache. And then we'll we'll place it down. File contains. Ah, uh, okay, I know what it is. Th this happens to me every once in a while because Illustrator does have their own spot colors yellow red all that jazz so let me so basically it's telling me it's already ha it already has those colors in there and that's conflicting so let's call white base number one white base yellow number two red we'll call it number three and navy number four and then there goes our, our print order Let's just go ahead and save that. We'll save over what we already have. Uh, we'll keep layer, layers checked. Uh, we'll replace it. Our spot colors were, were selected. We'll hit OK. So now we should be able to bring this in without any problem and it will bring up our spot colors. So we'll use the Im embedded profile G's. And there we go. So what you're kind of seeing here is a fact that we do have that t-shirt color there um, if you don't want to have that in your preview um, what we can do we can just back up for a second here and <clears throat> we'll just get rid of that shirt color we'll just delete it and then we'll just we'll just hit save because we already saved the thing so let's back up a, a few steps and get rid of these spot colors that we imported and we'll delete those just so we can show you how um how this all imports and there we go and, and the reason why this is showing up uh, a little funky is because I, I purposely made my white spot color a uh 
not completely white so that way I can make sure that things are trapping fine nothing showing through if I wanted to I can just go over here double click on that swatch and we'll just make it white and bada bing bada boom so there we go the next thing I would do essentially is I got my registration marks and all that if I want to I can go over to um, the registration marks and center marks and then drag this up so that way I'm not wasting too much film I can drag all this stuff up and we're good to go I can hit command P and then go to output and just make sure we're not printing because we did bring it as a PSD rather than EPS it has the original image on top of it so we just want to make sure we're printing our spot colors which is the white yellow red and navy and I hit print and I'm all done all right I'm going to go over to the chat real quick and then I'm going to go through the, the illustrator portion of this. I'm just going to um, delete that real quick. We'll separate it here. I'm going to go over to the chat real fast like. Uh, let's see. In always a conveyor dryer. Looks like we got some conversation going on here. Made it. Let's see. In saying, I think the 24 hour thing was a great idea, not for people to sit there, but for people to ask questions, post some answers, check back peri periodically. I appreciate that. Uh, I must have missed that a little earlier. Um, let's see, gray, yeah, what, what kind of cost? Okay. I went to first, yep. Okay. Do you have to pay for Photoshop and Illustrator monthly? Yes, yes you do. I mean, you can get a copy of it. I mean, in this day and age, most of it's kind of a cloud base. You can still get a downloadable version where you don't get any updates, but that's CS6 and things are continuing to progress. Uh, I, I CS6 is fine. However, eventually CS6 is going to become so outdated that eventually they're going to force you into using their their uh monthly uh subscription so uh get cs6 while you can if you don't want to do it monthly i think it's about 300 bucks um let's see i have sent a okay brian okay i had to send a piece of art back to the artist last week and have him spread four pixels instead of our typical two pixels it seems different art needs different spread or choke i agree different art uh, even the ink um whatever base you're using or, or ink that you're using sometimes i can make a difference if your your white base is a little runnier or if you're using a, a more open mesh um your your white base can by nature of screen printing actually spread so you might have to increase your spread to three or four pixels in Photoshop so yeah every job's a little different you just have to keep an eye on it and if you get everything registered up and it doesn't look good you need to go back and make changes that's the best time to make changes even though it's a pain in the butt so let's see Lee, St Lee Stewart um, Let's see, Lee Stewart uses a heat press sometimes as it gives a nice, yeah, uh, that, that gives a nice sheen to it. You can also use parchment paper to just flatten it. A lot of people do that for curing, screen printing, da da da, da. Made it glossy, shiny. Anyone have a hot head? <laughs> uh, I don't. Let's see. Hot head M and R. Definitely not. All right, looks like we're we're talking about equipment here. Hey, Mike, do you, Mikey, will this video be accessible on YouTube? I missed the beginning. Yes, it will be Embassy Kingdom Apparel. Um, just as soon as this broadcast is over, it will it will be there, and um, you can go back and check it out. Let's see, Mister No One. Do you use mainly 230 screens for spot colors too? Yeah, yeah. Uh, white base, I'll do like, depending on the garment, I might use a 156. Um, generally, I use like a 195, 200. Uh, hit it 
a couple, two or three times are, are automatic and only do it a couple times. That tends to clear just nicely. If it doesn't, we'll toss a little reducer in um, and then we'll flash it and use 230 on top. So that way we can do things wet on wet and speed the process up instead of having to flash between a bunch of colors. If you are doing a job that has four spot colors, yeah, same, same difference. Um, 195, to me, the key is um, a higher mesh white base, 195, 200. Uh, getting that down, if you can, flatten it and then do your top prints, uh, your over prints on top of that, your colors with the, a 230. So that way you're not putting down too much ink and you can do things wet on wet. If you do happen to notice an issue with things kind of um, starting to bleed together or if it starts looking like it's got a little bit of a stamping effect, then I would flash in between um, maybe a couple of those colors or when it starts looking a little muddy or stamped off looking. All right, cool. So now I'm going to go over to the uh, the Adobe Illustrator part of this. I'm just going to, to copy this. And I hit Command C. I'm going to close that out. I'm going to open my registration template one more time. This should go pretty fast because it's a pretty simple piece of art. Um, it, by the way, if you're in the market for Adobe Illustrator, be sure to, to check our link. It'll help support us. We got a link to uh, um, essentially get a subscription for Adobe Photoshop Illustrator, and it'll help us continue making these tutorials i do plan on doing some classes i'm going to make that happen this year and i've talked about it before okay command v i'm going to go ahead and paste that down and i'm just going to get rid of these guides that was in the artwork i'm going to select my art i want to make it nine inches wide it's going to go up here at the top nine inches i'm going to hit enter I'm going to hit Command G to group it, and then I'm going to go to Align, and I'm just going to center align this thing to my artboard. And as I said, you can grab this template up with our link down at the bottom. I'm going to move all this stuff up so that way, once we're finished separating this all out, we'll be good to go. <clears throat> and we'll have to move any registration marks. Okay, so I'm going to hit Command Shift G. A whole bunch of times until this thing is completely ungrouped so I can grab any one of these elements here and just move them around so I'm gonna hit undo until we get our original art back so I'm gonna select everything I'm just using my black pointer here and I'm gonna go down to my pathfinder and I'm gonna hit divide and what I'm going to do at this point is Hit A on the keyboard, select the yellow, go up to select, same fill color. That will get all my yellows. I'm going to hit Command X. And the reason I do this is, uh, I'll show you here in a second, but it's just to make sure I'm not grabbing anything else and nothing weird happens. So I'm going to hit Command F, paste it in the front, go down to my Pathfinder, and hit the Unite button. So now, if I grab this object here, it's, it's all connected. All the yellow is connected. And we got our spot color over here already. If we didn't have a spot color sign, we can just hit the new button and then name it whatever we want. In this case, someone assigned that spot colors already. So that's cool. So I'm just going to hit cancel. Now I'm going to go over to my red and I'm gonna hit command shift G get my red and then select same fill color same thing I'm gonna hit command X to cut it command F to paste it right back in place and then I'm gonna hit unite on the Pathfinder down here if your Pathfinder palette's not up just go to window and then Pathfinder and that pull that'll pull it right up okay and we already have a spot color assigned for it because uh, someone was kind enough to do that and then our, our navy looking or our dark blue we need to go ahead and select that so select same fill color and then we'll you we'll cut that then paste it in the front <clears throat> and then we'll unite it and we already got our spot color done and i'll show you why i was doing 
all the cutting, pasting it back in place, and then uniting it. So I'm going to grab my red here. I'm going to grab my yellow and my blue. Now, I just cut those. I'm going to paste those back in place. But if I hit Command-Y, you can see there's a couple pieces here and here that if I had just united them without cutting them, it would have filled in um, that part of the R and the A. So we need to come back here and uh, we need to basically select this and then delete it. I'm going to hit Command Y again to get my regular view and then Command F to paste it right back in front. So there we go. Now at this point, what I'm going to do, uh, let's say in this instance, just to, to make things easy, we're going to put a spread on the red and the yellow. Um, and we'll end up printing the, the navy on top of this yellow and red. So that way there, there's no white that's going to peek through. Like say, for instance, if you did a butt registration and things kind of wiggled a little bit. All right, let's take this, this red. We're going to put a stroke on it. And we're going to take that same red color. And then with our stroke, what I'm going to do is make sure that it is on the outside. So um, I'm going to pull this to the front. And that's Command Shift, this little right bracket here. Um, two keys over from the P. So we brought that to the front. And then same thing with this yellow. I'm going to assign it that yellow stroke. Uh, we got a one point, that's fine. And we're gonna bring this to the outside and I'm gonna bring that to the front. So that way we can, we can see our little bit of spread. So as you can see it here, we got some spread going on. And then last but not least, what we need to do is create a, a white base. So I'm just gonna make a new layer in this case, and I'm gonna drag it underneath the art, and I'm gonna name it white base. And I'm going to select the red and the yellow. I'm gonna hit Command C to copy that. I'm gonna turn my art layer off that has my colors on it, go back down to my white base, and then hit Command B, kind of paste it in back. And I'm going to remove the stroke from this. So I'm just going to hit uh, the none here for the stroke. And we're going to have to actually make um, our, our white base color here. So I'm going to, I'm just going to select one of these and then I'm going to hit new swatch right here. We'll call this white base. And I'm going to just give it just a touch of cyan so we can see our white base. I mean, technically we would be able to see it, but I want to show you how it will overlay on top of everything. So I'm going to give it a little bit of cyan. I typically do this with all everything I separate. And it's a spot color and we're going to hit OK. So there's our white base and we're going to select our red, make that a white base. We'll select these two, what was yellow and red, but is now our white base. I'm just gonna go down to my Pathfinder and unite those so we just have one solid object there. All right, so now if we turn on our art, which has our colors, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna, let's just lock the white base. That way I can select these three colors real quick. And then we're going to go over to Attributes. If your palette's not up, go to Windows. And then attributes and we are going to select overprint fill and then overprint stroke because we do have a stroke in our fills that um, we will need because the 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 navy is basically going to the trap the the yellow and the red so in this case i might print the white flash it do the red and the yellow print the navy on top the c um, how things are coming out, things start to muddy up, um, print your white, flash it, do your red and your yellow, wet on wet, flash those, and then do your your um, your dark blue or your navy as an overprint. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to hit Command-Shift-Y, and that will show us what our overprint looks like. Another way to do that is to go to Separations Preview, um, if your window is not up again, just go to window separations preview and that just toggles our, our overprint on and off that 
keyboard command that I did. And you can do the same thing here down at the bottom. So I'm going to click over print preview. And what we are looking for, make sure we trap this properly. You see how these two overlap. So this, this is how these things are, are overlapping and the, the blue is over printing on, on top of that. And same, same thing for the, the race down here. Let's see, it looks like I may have, and this will also tell you um, if you did a, a good job, really, because we can turn our, our layers on and off and see how much spread we have or, or don't have. Let me make this white base a little bit darker because it is kind of hard to see. All right, so that's a little bit better. Okay, so now it's a little more apparent how much spread we have on our our red for this type here same thing for you know the red down with the navy and where you know anywhere these colors meet so that that will trap it quite nicely um it does look like there are some cyan magenta and yellow in there so i'm going to turn off all my spot colors and so it looks like what we have here must be left over from something. I have no idea. Actually, I probably just, okay, let me back up for a second there. Okay, let me, it's really, sometimes you can just turn these things on and off and see where it's at, but I, I think we're fine, okay. Looks like we're fine. So now all I would have to do is, is hit Command P, print with Illustrator. Just go to Output, make sure Cyan, Magenta, and all that's turned off. And we would print our colors and do our white base, our yellow, red, flash those, or potentially print our, our navy on top. So there you have it. That's how I would go about separating these two different pieces of art with Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator. Just wanted to show you guys an example of that. I do know that we're running a little bit over time, but let me go back and, and see what is going on in the chat. Hopefully I'm not missing anything. Uh, I always have my off contact low and yeah, I rarely, rarely move my off contact. Okay, cool. Well, I hope this was helpful. For those of you that are, are just tuning in, be sure to check our, our links down in the description. Um, you can get Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator through our link that helps support our channel so that way we can continue to, to make videos like these for you and be sure to subscribe give this give this video a, a like smash that like button and leave a comment even if it's just a hello it'll help our channel grow get some more viewers and we can get uh, we can grow this community that is our, our little online screen printing community so to speak so let me um switch this over real quick and i appreciate it shannon the shop gnome appreciates it even though she is down today she's here but we need to get out of here and um i hope you learned something let me know if you have any questions leave them down in the comments and until next time We'll see you later, guys, and this will just take me a second to click my outro thing. <laughs> I am out. I'll see y'all later. Y'all have a good one.